Hi everyone, this is Jason here from the Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, we are basically going to look at the pretty much the world's most popular rhythm, what we call as the pop clave or what they call as the tresio, right? Basically, a group of three beats which come together in a very, very interesting assortment to create just something which will make you get off your chair and start moving or dancing may not be dancing in specific but some form of movement will happen when you hear something like this right you'll find it in pretty much all the modern day pop hits of the last i guess 10 to 15 years you could say right so i'm just going to call it the tresio for this lesson or the pop clave. Uh, we we'll first look at how we are going to count the tresio. Then we've developed a nice little chord pattern which is quite popular. So you'll already find that it sounds similar to stuff you've been listening to. You know, if you listen to modern day pop music. Then we look at what the left hand is going to do with some roots, thirds, fifths. Develop some stuff there. Some interesting left hand arpeggios as well which we'll work on um, and then we are going to look at the contrast. The main point of today's lesson is to show you the contrast between what I am calling as the slow tresio and the fast tresio or the normal groovy EDM tresio if you will. Right? Uh, this is something which I found is not covered that often. Even we've done a couple of lessons on the tresio rhythm in the past. We've done I think two or three using arpeggios, using the hits, using a variety of songs also. Uh, but in this lesson I want to focus a little bit more attention towards the speeds of the tresio. Even though it's the same tempo, one speed will access 8th notes and the other speed will access 16th notes. More on that obviously in the lesson. If you are a beginner, you are going to find this useful. If you are an advanced player or an intermediate player, you need to follow along till the very end. And even if you are a beginner, there may be some things which you can't play, but maybe there will be things which could inspire you train your ear, improve your hand coordination for sure, uh, understand chord inversions, understand a few aspects of music which are very rudimentary, very important, very essential and so on. Right guys, so before we get started, it'll be great if you could subscribe and more, more importantly, there is a bell icon next to the subscribe somewhere there. Hit that as well because we do a lot of lessons, a lot of regular lessons over the weeks and the months and we've been averaging quite a few, you know, uh, at least over the past two, two, three years. So make sure to hit the bell because whenever we release a new lesson, you'll be notified and immediately you can watch it or save it to watch later or download it or use whichever feature of YouTube you enjoy. Right, so let's get cracking. So first off, let's count the tresio. The way I do this is, first off, let's do it with 8th notes. So the way it works will be 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and it's over 4 beats. 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3. So the first thing would be the hit points which would be 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. The 1 and of the 2 on of the 4. One, and of the two, on of the four. Tam, pam, 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 pam. Got okay. So this is using an eighth note flavor. Now, if you have to divide this into more units, we call them as sixteenth notes. Essentially, we divide the pulse into four. So that would be one. Right? For one E and a two E and a so a good way to count it popularly would be one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. So same hit points, tresio, one E and a two E and a three and a four, one E and a two E and a three and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three and a four. It's essential also to count it initially. Use any form of counting, but the one I'm sharing is like a standard, so might as well use that, right? So with the the quicker speed and you tap it. Maybe for today's lesson with your right hand because I, I'm we are going to generate some chord hits in the right hand. Okay, more on the left hand maybe in another video. So you go one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a, this is the tresio. Mm, mm. One e and a two e and chika boom chika boom chika chika boom chika chika boom chika boom chika boom chika boom. Now 
if we slow this down one and two and three and it would pretty much be the same hit points one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four one and two uh, so i'd encourage you to practice it with the and and one e and a two e and a three and a four dik chikat kadum chikat tak chikatum where you have more access to the beats or the sub beats there's more beats in the beat which is what we call as a sub beat tak chikat tak Okay, so that's about the tresio. Um, also, let's study the other tresio, which is the more popish one or the EDM one, uh, which actually both are popular. So I honestly don't know what to call them. Maybe there's an official name for it. You can help me out in the comments. So you go now. This is the pop tresio, or what I'm calling now as the EDM tresio. Ta ta. So. pretty much the same hit points but it's just gotten a bit faster so you can look at it as a spacing of three beats another three and then another two adding up to an even number 3 plus 3 plus 2 equals to 8 so it goes 1 to 3 1 to 3 1 1 2 3 1 so some musicians like to actually count it as the you know 1 to 3 1 to 3 1 to 1 to 3 1 to 3 1 to 1 to 3 1 to 3 1 to 1 or maybe using konakol you could say takit takit tak takit tak tak takit tak 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 right or using the official beat symbols you go One e, a two e, and a three, a four e, and a one e. So it's a two-beat phrase, right? Over two beats. If you do it as sixteenth note, so one e, a two e, and a three e, a four e, and a one e, a two e, and a three e, a four e, and tick 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 tick. Sounds pretty much like all the songs out there, right? One e, a two e, and a three e, a kdoom doom tta kdoom one e. So you need to feel a sense of energy and excitement at the off beats, which are at the ers or the es or even the ands. If you choose to do the slow tresio, that ensures that you create a very human performance with a lot of feel, and it doesn't sound so robotic as some of the programmed music tends to sound sometimes so on the piano we want it to be with your own personality or your own feel okay so slow tresio one and two e and three and four one and two e and a one and two e and a three and a four sorry one and two e and a three and a four one and We end now the fast one. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a and a. And later on in the chapter or in this lesson, we are going to look at various things to do to make the fast or the pop tresio a lot more exciting. Like ta 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 ida ta ida dum ta ta ida ta ida or maybe dum pa pa dum ta dum ta 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 dum. stuff like that which we are going to talk about very very shortly so make sure you watch the whole lesson there's a lot which is going to happen in this lesson in not too long a time but watch the whole lesson okay so now i'm going to choose a chord pattern which is super simple b minor d major a major and e minor i'm not going to spend too much too much time on the formation of these chords it's written out for you in our handwritten notes i've written down every inversion and the mapping of every chord to every chord with the most efficient way possible so if you start from here you go b minor to d major always train yourself by playing the roots of the chord in the bass unless otherwise mentioned unless they say it's a slash chord or something so b minor d major a major e minor i kind of like even e major it's also nice gives you a more rock dorian feel but we'll stick with the e minor each chord for two beats would be nice but if you if you want if you're new to this stuff you could do each chord four times so learn your chords with the respective inversions which have been put out for you or if you know inversions great so right now i'm playing it in a very sort of ballad accompaniment style you could say uh, it works great if you're just doing like a slow um 
you know emotional or uplifting kind of music but if you want to groove with this we have to now play it in the style of the tresio right that's what this whole lesson is about so let's just start with the same hit points which we learned earlier 1e e and a 2e e and a 3e e and a 4e e and a same hit points but now obviously without my tapping of the leg and the shaker by the way i would always recommend some kind of percussion to keep you going a shaker maybe a tambourine maybe a bongo which is really nice for piano it's a great simulation or just your body right you could just do like a kick or your left hand simulation here and your right hand there that's what i do you could figure out something or whack something in your house without destroying it hopefully okay so you go the um, inversions are mapped out now let's whack the chords of the right hand with the tresio rhythm grouping okay or the structure of the tresio so slow version there we have it and what is my left hand doing basically pulse okay that's 1 2 3 4 always recommended to maintain a steady pulse maybe as your first rhythm which you will ever do you know just to get the wiring right pulse is very very important it ensures that you are going to be on time with your band okay with the tresio now ஒன்னோ <laughs> there we go and a two and what i like to do in my left hand to not get a very aggressive sound is don't whack both the root and the octave together maybe you could start with the root and the octave together at the one and then dissipate it so 1 2 3 4 1 so it's only thumb so pinky thumb at the one and now only thumb that's four hits and you can play around with this later because you've kind of worked on the isolation of the pinky and the thumb which is very important for groove so e and a two e and check that out in the left also if you can make the thumb of the left a little softer not gets a bit annoying i guess so keep the thumb of the left nice and soft mellow and hold the pinky if you observe the pinky of my left is held a little faster with some dynamics would be awesome right so now let's do the exact same thing but now with the fast tresio what was the fast tresio again let's do that so left hand again pulse so a nice practice would be to kind of snap the left hand or maybe tap it here one e and a two e and a so i'm only doing 1 2 3 4 with my left hand which is eventually so this is a great simulation for what's going to happen on the keyboard with the chord roots of each chord b for b minor d for d major a for a major and finally e for e minor so you go play everything 
basically six hits. So Tresio now becomes sort of uh, shortened or fastened, uh, fastened or faster. That's the right word. So you go tan 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 tan. So you need two uh, Tresio points or two Tresio uh, sections. One e, a two e, and a, again, repeat. You could change it faster, but for now, let's just do each chord for an entire bar of four. There we have it. Don't bring in your left hand until you've got the pulse on either your body or maybe on your leg somewhere or a table, or you could also consider snapping. Also allows you to hear your right hand very well. Can I maybe do staccato, staccato? The last one could be legato. So you can focus a bit on the right hand, get the way the right hand should feel or how you want to play it, and then the left hand comes in. So long, quite popish, right? Okay, coming to the left hand now. So. The same snap on the with the left hand. Chord roots and for flavor, you could kind of toggle instead of whacking both together. You could go. You could do root, octave, root, octave. Quite like that. So toggle instead of going pam 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 pam, you do root octave. It's still the pulse, isn't it? You could also toggle root and fifth. There we have it. Starts giving a very Latin vibe, right? Salsa vibe. Just that fifth. Mm, you could also play around with the third if you'd like. So what's the third from each chord? B's third would be B D minor third because minor minor chord. Then D F sharp because that's a D major. Then A to C sharp. E G. Sometimes I end up doing a major by well by choice because I like the Dorian. So you go. Or you have the best of both worlds, the third and the fifth. You could do something like a arpeggio, what I also call as a slow arpeggio. So that's B, D, F sharp, D, low note, middle note, high note, middle note. You could do that or you could do low note, high note, middle note, high note, L, H, M, H. With respect to the chord, this is the L, this is the M, and that is our H. Now, you could also do L, M, H, M. So, both, let me show you. All sound nice over the fast tresio. Maybe not over the slow one. Actually, it sounds good, it sounds good on the slow one as well. Yeah, sounds good on both. More commonly on the fast one though, which is... <laughs> Keep the feel going. Sixteens, so... So that's about your left hand. Either you whack them both together... Or you toggle them, root octave, or you do like a root fifth, root third, or you combine the root fifth and the third with like a slow arpeggio. Right? (coughs) 
Right. So uh, at this stage, if you practice both the Tresio patterns, the slow one and the fast one, you could use it for a ton of music. You could use it for ballad stuff. You can use it for modern day dance music. You could even use it for some older 80s music or uh, anything for that matter. It, it it, by popular doesn't mean it has to be used by a specific group of artists. You could even use it in a rock context. It's used a lot by a lot of rock bands, progressive bands and so on and so forth. What I thought I'll um, end this lesson with would be to show you a few ways in which I use these two Tresio patterns. The slow one and the fast one. So let me just show you a few of my patterns you could say the my go to patterns which i which you'll find in a lot of my music and the daily riffs which keep coming your way on youtube right so the slow tresio pattern the first thing i'd like to consider or focus on would be dynamic chord so first look at play the same thing with a lot of dynamics essentially Think like a wave. Think or think like you're going up and then down a hill, a very smooth hill, you know, not a pointy hill. So you go with the tresio. You can even practice the dynamics with just one chord, I guess. That'll be good. So See, it's kind of soft, but the volume is still changing, isn't it? And if you'd like, you can explode. It's like a build-up. Always give your listener a taste of the, the volume. And then when, when you go to the next section, just blast it out and this could also be with relation to the drummer uh, it could be with relation to your arrangement of your song or most importantly your singer you have to see what the singer is up to is the singer going softly you know something more mellow like in that volume versus now that's going a bit louder so obviously you need to thus follow the singer or if you are a singer yourself even better it's kind of easier to follow your own dynamics right so that was dynamics over the chords another thing you could consider doing is adding a few ghost notes here and there now we've done a lot of lessons on uh, ghost notes um, you should definitely follow my powerful ballad accompaniment youtube lesson which is used a lot in song so there are a lot of these ballad videos which i've done and even stuff to learn ghost notes so those are the two topics you may find useful along this lesson so what i'm doing here is so just those small little embellishments let me just show you one for this chapter and two and three and four so i'm just adding the and as well So I'm kind of breaking my right hand chord and just doing one single hit. That one. So I do this a lot. Also in the left hand you could do just before you climb to the next chord. And four and. So the and of the four could be ghosted. So ghosting is nothing but a chord tone uh, of the chord, which you just play very lightly or very shortly. Like you play it in a staccato manner or in a softer manner. So I'll just show you the right hand ghost and then the left hand ghost. Just to recap, that one is the right ghost with your thumb, two and three and four. First emphasize one and two and three and f emphasize it and then get it into your system played a bit softer. Now coming to the left ghost. 
there we go just before we go to the next call probably wondering why is he using this term ghost all the time well it is a technical term at least for drummers bass players guitar players because they have the ability to do these things you know but i'm just taking that language to the piano because i really don't know what else to call it so anyway that was about ghost notes with dynamics the next thing we do very often with I, which i would love to demonstrate with the slow thresio is something you would have heard very often so you take there we have it arpeggios but following the thresio feel which is 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 so your accent points 1 and a uh, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 will be the thumb of your uh, right hand or the highest finger of the right hand i'll come to that so with the thumb tak 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 1 2 3 1 2 3 these are not triplets you're just grouping the accents that's what creates the accent right 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 
make sure to use the correct inversions right and just to give you a, a hint maybe it will inspire us to do another lesson in the future you can kind of combine the thresio with a few more hits and not do tuck 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 do tuck You've heard that a lot, right? Very familiar rhythm. So you can do things like the song clave, tank, 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 tank. or you can do something like the uh, bossa clave or the the bossa nova clave, which could be tak 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 tao tak 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 tao. So if you can, you could add that as well. <laughs> that was the playing with the uh, e of the three, but now if I do the claves. Right. So the tresio, when augmented with the clave, becomes a very, very interesting phrase. It's like tension and resolution in rhythm, which is a bit weird but very true. It's tak 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 ta ta. That's the resolution. So chords don't. Tense and resolve. It's not tension resolution only for intervals and chords. You even have the same equation, the same emotion for rhythm, just rhythm. Okay. So anyway, that's pretty much what I plan to do in today's lesson. Explore the two speeds of the tresio, which is very inspiring and very important. The slow one, fast one, right. Then we so after we learned both the speeds, we then looked at the chord progression: B minor, D, mi D major, A major, E minor. Learn it with the correct inversions. Then we looked at some left hand toggling techniques with the slow tresio, the fast tresio. Then we looked at some of the patterns which I use a lot in my music, like adding a lot of dynamics, a lot of ghost notes, uh, splitting it up instead of chord hits, doing arpeggios, adding some 16th note flavor, um, and then creating more variations over the beats, making it more um, or less monotonous. Instead of doing tak, 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 we did tak, 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 tak. And so on and so forth. Right, guys? I hope you found the lesson useful. This was about the Tresio. Watch our other stuff on the Tresio rhythms. And uh, we have a playlist called Rhythm Chops. So check that out as well. In that playlist, you'll find all the lessons which I cover topics on in the rhythmic domain. Right, So check that out and uh, some of them I understand are for more intermediate learners, some of them are maybe a bit more advanced but a lot of them can be digested by all of you I hope right? and even if you can't play it as I tell students you need to get inspired and moved by the sound you will eventually play it you can't play something unless you love it you know it's very difficult you, so you have to find a way you have to listen to it and just enjoy the music and then you're more motivated towards learning the subject. Again, this is Jason here from Nathaniel. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. All of these notes are available on Patreon as, as always. Not only this lesson, stuff in the past and the stuff which is going to hit your way. Um, you, if you'd like something more regular and structured, you can consider our foundation course, foundation piano course, which includes theory and ear training. That will also be on YouTube. We have members only videos if you'd like to watch them. Or if you'd like to learn with me in person, you can follow the form which is in the description and hit us up and you can join one of my courses at whichever level would suit you best. And don't forget to hit that bell. Very, very important. Hit the bell now if possible. Cheers. This is Jason.